one of the most iconic and notorious medieval kings of England was Edward I, who was known as the Hammer of the Scots due to his warring campaigns to the north of his kingdom. Edward was a man who was seen as one of the most skilled military commanders in Europe. However, he was also someone who was very ruthless and would order attacks upon civilians who were not fighting against him. Edward reigned from 1272 to 1307, and when he finally succumbed to his death, he was a man aged 68, which was a huge achievement for a medieval man, and this would have made him one of the oldest men across his kingdom, when the life expectancy at the time was rather poor. But what happened with Edward I's death, and what did he succumb to on the 7th of July 1307? Join us today as we look at this, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Edward I was born in June 1239 inside the Palace of Westminster, and he was the son of King Henry III and his wife, Eleanor of Provence. His father named him after Edward the Confessor, but when he was a young man, his health was not the best, and he suffered with a number of serious illnesses, and it looked at one point as if the young prince would not live. However, he did reach adulthood, and he was known for his height, in which he stood at six feet two inches tall, and for this was known as Edward Longshanks. When he was 14, his father married him to Eleanor of Castile, and the thought behind this was to prevent an invasion by the Castilian family in southwestern France, which was an English province. On the 1st of November 1254, Edward married Eleanor, and this marriage produced 16 children, but five daughters and a son would only reach adulthood. But when he was young, he was influenced by his uncles, and he was hated by a number of members of the English aristocracy, and he was involved with Simon de Montfort, a leader of a group of rebellious barons who opposed the rule of Henry III, Edward's father. But Edward continued to voice his opinion, and he became rather rebellious towards his father, and he pledged his full support to the leader of the rebels, Simon de Montfort. His father, the king, believed he was planning a coup, and to try and dethrone him, but the pair later reconciled. During the Second Baron's War, Edward sided with his father to defend the crown, and he went on the attack and launched a military campaign against the rebel barons, and this resulted in the death of de Montfort. But Edward then got involved in the Ninth Crusade, the last major crusade to the Holy Land, and this conflict was rather short and disastrous, and with this Edward, while he was in Sicily, was told that his father had died, Edward I was then proclaimed King of England, and he was then crowned as the King on the 19th of August 1274. During his reign he made a number of significant changes to the way he governed his kingdom, and he was a commander of the military, a religious man, but also someone who was seen as a skilled administrator. He made many changes to the law, and during his reign English Parliament met many times, and this was the foundations of government that is around today. He called his first parliament in 1275, and this included members of the church and the nobility, along with the election of two county representatives, and this was known as model parliament. He managed to raise necessary funds through taxation, but he continued to war with other nations. Edward I dealt with Wales, and in opposition to a number of small uprisings in Wales, he launched a full-blown assault and military campaign, in which he would conquest. He invaded in 1277 and defeated the Welsh rebel leader, and then rampaged to the west and built many castles to show his royal power. But Edward ordered any rebellious actions to be put down brutally, and with this terrible acts of violence were committed, and the country was then seen as a vassal state to England, and many of Edward I's castles still exist today. He also dealt with uprisings in Scotland. In 1290 he was recognised as a Scottish overlord, and he then decided who would succeed to the Scottish throne. Edward chose John Balliol, and he was seen as a puppet, who the English king could control, and when Edward invaded Scotland, he had Balliol imprisoned inside the Tower of London. But Edward I, because of his campaigns in Scotland, became known as the Hammer of the Scots, as he was very ruthless, and he continued to campaign and wage war against the Scots. But inside of his kingdom, he did order the expulsion of the Jews, which saw Edward seize the property of those kicked out of his nation. But in 1306 it was noted that inside the king's household accounts that a lot of medicine, ointments and other pieces of clothing were ordered as the king was suffering. 
The king's legs were treated by doctors, and he even at times wore a neck brace, and he suffered from painful joints. To combat this, Edward took herbal baths, and he consumed medicinal remedies, some which even contained gold, silver and pearl. But Edward's health continued to decline in his final years, but he refused to die, and he went on one final Scottish campaign. In his final years, he continued to wage war against the Scots, and continued to be ruthless. He brutally imprisoned Robert the Bruce's sister in a cage, and also executed his brother, who was hanged, drawn and quartered. In February 1307, Edward then began to gather his men, and he rallied himself as he moved north. Edward I continued to execute leading Scottish nobles, for example the Earl of Atoll, who was executed on a large gallows built specifically for the occasion. But when he rode out to Carlisle on the 3rd of July 1307, Edward I contracted dysentery, and on the 6th of July they reached Berg by Sands, which was on the English side of the northern border. But the following day the king's servants entered his tent to try and rally the king, as they lifted him from his bed, and Edward fell dead into their arms. News of Edward's death was kept secret to prevent desertion, and of course he was a very old man at the time, and Edward II was then crowned Edward's son. Edward I's body was sent south, and it arrived at Waltham Abbey in Essex, and here it lay in state, and a number of vigils were held for the king, and much prayer was said for his soul. There were preparations made for the funeral, and his body was then eventually moved to St Paul's, before it was then moved to Westminster Abbey for the funeral. The king was laid to rest during this in his coronation robes, which included a red silk tunic and a cloth of gold lower garment, and a crown was placed on his head as was tradition, and in his hands his sceptres of royal office were placed. Edward I was then interred in a plain black Purbeck marble tomb, and there was no effigy placed on top of it, and the words, Edward the first hammer of the Scots is here, was later added. But Edward's tomb was so plain, and some have even speculated that this may have been done to save money, or that Edward II may have been pleased that his father had died. But another possibility is that Edward I had wished for his body to not remain in a tomb for long, as he actually wanted his body to be allegedly boiled down, and his bones then taken to the Holy Land on crusade as a relic. The tomb of Edward I was opened on the 2nd of May 1774 by the Dean of Westminster, and his body was said to have been perfectly preserved, and his dried skin was visible, and it was confirmed that he was six foot two inches tall. But due to the coolness of the air and the low humidity inside of Westminster Abbey, he had been well preserved. It was said of the king's body that, the chin and lips were entire, but without any beard, and a sinking or dip between the chin and the under lip was very conspicuous. Both the lips were prominent, the nose short as if shrunk, but the apertures of the nostrils were visible. There was an unusual fall or cavity on the part of the bridge of the nose, which separates the orbits of the eyes, and some globular substance, possible fleshy part of the eyeballs, was movable in their sockets, under the envelope. Edward I was a king of England for over 35 years, and inside of his kingdom he was very well respected, but he was a man who waged serious war against his enemies, including the Welsh and the Scottish, securing English power across Britain. But he was a ruthless and brutal man, who ordered significant executions of prominent Scottish nobles and commanders, such as William Wallace, and he would spare no dissent. Edward I, because of this, is considered one of the strongest, if not the strongest, English medieval king. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.